Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM tutorials. This series is about how to use FTCSIM.org, the first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. This actual video is going to be about the color sensor, a video I've done a couple of times already, but um, there are new enhancements and improvements to the FTCSIM.org, so time for a new video. If this is your first time with ftcsim.org, you might want to check out the other videos. However, you have to have an account first. So I have an account at this login, ftcsim.org slash ftcsim slash. But if you don't, you can go up to this menu and you can choose where I've already logged in. You can see that down here where you get here. You'll see that it says login, create your login at that point. It's free. Uh, it just needs a little bit of information. The second thing you might think of is if you're a teacher or a team leader, you may wish to create a login for yourself as a teacher account. And then that way you can create logins for other people on your team, the students or the team members uh, without them having to provide any personal information. So if you haven't logged in or if you need to create a login, pause the video at this point and uh, join us when you have that done. Okay, hopefully you're back and you've logged in. We're gonna scroll down to where it has the tutorials or the puzzles. We're gonna choose FTC sensors for today's color sensor um, tutorial. So we're gonna, there's, there are 10 puzzles here. We're gonna choose the first one. And when we get there, we'll see a video pop up. This is the video that we're trying to create a new one to replace. So hopefully you won't see that one again. And then once we get in here, I'm going to zoom in on the code I've already created and scroll up a little bit so that you can see it. If you've been in here before, this may look new to you. It's been enhanced and improved. Uh, it looks fantastic. There's lots of things around the room. I'm not going to go and see what they are right now. But the Argosy Group is one I'm going to mention in a second because they've helped with the funding of the development of this. and this little lightning bolt that's popping up and down, which looks uh, grayed out for me because I've already done it and, and earned that, you and your teammates can earn those lightning bolts in the various programs. And when you get a certain number of them, you can apply for uh, a grant from the Argosy Foundation, which may provide you with some cash to help run your team. And there's more information about that at ftcsim.org. In any case, most of the videos, uh, most of the puzzles are relatively the same. You have to write in commands over here to make this robot here or a different one in the grabby robot go and move and eventually get to one of the flags. In this case, there are two flags. What's going to happen is that this square is going to change either to red or blue, which is why we're using the color sensor. One of the gates is going to come down. And then you're going to be able to drive into this touchpad and it'll cause the flag to raise and you'll have done this. Um, you'll have completed the task. However, it's randomly going to come up red or blue. So we're going to deal with both of those situations. And just to demonstrate, you can see where it turns red or blue. There you see it. Okay. So you can see that it turns red or blue. This robot will move forward because as in most of the other videos, most of the other puzzles, we've had to change the left motor to reverse so that it and the right motor are spinning in the same direction. In this case, we want them to spin forward. If you've seen some of the other videos, you might notice that most of the time, uh, the speed is a lot faster than 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1. And that's because <clears throat> what I noticed when I started this one is if I had it going too fast and then I tried to make a turn down here, it would skid out and wouldn't do what I needed it to do. So as a result, I'm making it go really slowly. What's going to happen is that there's a color sensor on the bottom at the front of this robot. And it's going to, as soon as we start it, it's going to start producing values. And it's going to store those values in a variable that we'll talk about later on. We don't want it to do anything different than move forward until it gets a value that represents the red or the blue square. So how do we do that? Well, <clears throat> because it's going to keep taking values again and again and again for as long as it's moving, we need to actually put the code that's going to determine whether it turns and what the value it's taking 
but it's sensing inside of a loop. So it keeps doing it over and over and over again. And that's what a loop does. It repeats commands over and over again. And that's what we're going to do for this color sensor. So under sensors, you can see that there's a color sensor. It has a couple of items and you can see they're all in here. Um, but it also has something in the utilities here, which we're going to use. So we're going to use this RGB to color ones. We're going to drag it in and we're going to put those ones in there instead of the numbers. And I'm going to get rid of that because I don't really need it because I already got it in there. And then <clears throat> what it's going to do is it's going to store whatever value is generated from the sensor, whatever value it picks up from looking at the floor. It's going to store that value in a variable. I've created that variable by going down here to where it says variables, create variable, and I've given it the name sense color, and then it gives me some options, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have this utility determine what color it sees and send it to sensed color. But I only want to do something when it senses one of two colors. I want it to do something if it senses that the color sensor is blue or the color sensor is red. But it doesn't say blue or red here. It says 0 and 227. Where does that come from? Well, you notice I'm mentioning the hue here. I want the hue. So if we go over here and we look at this tutorial from First Tech Challenge, there's a bunch of tutorials there. I had to watch this one to figure it out. It's using the color sensor part one. It says the hue values of the color sensor that are converted to hue values are on a color wheel. And the color wheel, as all wheels are, go from 0 to 360. So 360 degrees. The red is in this range. It depends on what the programmers have decided that red value is going to be. And as I saw in the if statement, the red value that closest approximates it is 0. Down here is the area that's blue. And blue, that you can see, goes in a range as does the red. And the range value that we found that works is 227. So you can go to YouTube and search for First Tech Challenge block tutorials if you want to see more about that. It's got all kinds of stuff in there. And hopefully you'll get something out of that as I did. <clears throat> so how do I know that this could be 227 or zero. Well, I'm using telemetry. So telemetry is going to show on our phone, but it's going to show on the screen here. It's going to show a value. And the value is going to be, it's going to keep showing a different value as the robot moves because the sensor code is inside the loop. So it's going to keep this. Let's run it and see what value it is. So we're going to watch up here, see what the value is that's produced. So there's the red and we get on top of it and it's zero see if we can find out uh, the blue there we go there's blue it gets on top of it and it's 227 so there we go so there's the two values that we need so what i've done is i've created two ifs so an if is a decision structure and you get them from your logic right in there and inside of there i also get this command that is my logical operator for equals and it's going to turn true or false so if it returns false it's not going to do any of this code if it returns true it's going to do the next set of code down there until it gets to the end of the if right down at the bottom there and what did i want to put in there i wanted to go to the utilities and i wanted to look at color sensor and i wanted to say if the color hue so it's in there let's see i'm going to drag it over a little bit and then i need the variable so there's the variable and what value do I need? I need to know from the math, I need a value in there. And I need to know if it's, click in there, 227. And so that's what I put in there. That's how I built it. So I'm going to delete that. You can slow it down and watch it again if you can see it. And if it is 227, it's going to turn it. So this block turns it. It sets one wheel backward, the spin backwards, one wheel to spin forward. It does it for half a second, and then that will turn it 90 degrees, either to the left or the right, depending on which, which value is in here. Then it's going to go forward, sets the value to the same thing, same power. For a, a second, if you want to choose a faster power, if you want to do 0 0.5, then you're going to have to change this. So it's going to go too far. And that will get it on top of the touchpad, and then I want to stop. And this last one says, look, 
if this worked, then get out of the loop because you don't want to do anything else. You've gotten to the end. And then I'm doing exactly the same thing, except, <clears throat> except I'm turning in the other direction where I was turning left. Now I'm turning right, for example. And you can see the only difference is that those two things have been switched. So let's see how it goes. So I started up. It's going to start sensing and away it goes. It's sensing and then it senses the zero and it turns to the right. It goes to the touchpad and the fly goes up. Let's see if I can get a blue here. Oh, that was fast. So the same thing turns, goes forward, stops. And again, I could have gone a little further along if I wanted to, but the sensor is now right over top of that. So I've decided to stop at that point. Now, if I had wanted to, instead of using two different ifs, I could have used an if with an else if. And the else if would be exactly what I've got inside of this if. But I've decided that I wanted to do a little bit simpler at first and do two separate ifs. Part of the reason for that is I wanted to make sure each of them worked independently because I could try this one. I could disable this one and then run it and try this one and then see uh, if it works and so on before I re-enable it. In any case, that is how you use a color sensor in ftcsim.org. Very, very similar to what you would do on your actual robot when you get it. Hopefully you'll have one. Hopefully if you have any questions, you'll contact us. Uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions, if you've figured out a way to be more efficient with your code, I would love to see that. And you can reach me with any of these questions or comments at pkeenan at firstinspires.org. So have a great day and enjoy ftcsim.org.